edge. Dennis Lilly striking again, and a great catch that by Rodney Marsh. Rodney Marsh, this is comes to be out. It's so easy out, it is. That's the straight to Australia needed. What a marvellous catch that was. The bouncer is off the glove, and he's gone, and that's Marsh has done it. That's the record. That's six more. He's got hold of that down with the Victor Richardson gate. That's a beauty with Rodney Marsh. Drake Tibble's got it. That is the record. Lily and Marsh, what a pair. This week, as they launched the book, Ten Turbulent Years, the two record breakers spoke on just how they look back on this period of triumph and turmoil. With mixed feelings, I guess. I mean, we weren't responsible Papers, for it. with the organisers losing money hand over fist until that magical night at the Sydney Cricket Ground when the lights came on for the very first time and 50,000 fans turned out. Unbelievable. I, I think you know, two things stand out to me that night was that Kerry Packer threw open the members' gates <laughs> and let the mob in off the street. I reckon that was fantastic. And I think perhaps Eddie Barlow summed it all up. He came into our dressing room afterwards, had tears in his eyes and said, we've made it. And we had. That was that. During those ten turbulent years, you uh, played under a few Australian captains. We might uh, perhaps just go through them, eh? First up, uh, Ian Chappell. You want me to be blatantly honest here, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> He's on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bertie. Um, no, Ian Chappell, no doubt, uh, in my mind, was the best captain I ever played under and would rate as one of the best I saw in my time. Um, Greg was a a top captain. I mean, there wasn't much difference between them except in the way they got the best out of their men. And how did they do that? Greg, I think, was more the uh, sort of do as I say, uh, this is the way to do it, sort of almost school teacherish. <laughs> I knew you were going to say and, that. Uh, <laughs> and Ian was more um, let it sort of happen, but then if there's a problem, afterwards take your side, have a beer, or sit down and just talk it out. Um, one was quite explosive on the field and one was very calm on the field, but they both got results. The only other captain I played under was uh, Kim Hughes, and, uh, well, I just don't rate him at all as a captain. So, uh, you know, a good player, uh, but not, not a captain. And what were his uh, great deficiencies? Well, I think uh, he just really was pushed into the, uh, uh, the position through politics, and I don't think he was ready for it. Uh, and that the deficiency was no experience as a captain beforehand. I think he'd probably captained a couple of grade sides um, for two or three games before he was captain of Australia. So, I mean, you can't just pick that up by watching. To sum up Kim's captaincy, the best way probably is that he wanted the captaincy for the wrong reasons. I don't think anyone should really want badly to be Australian cricket captain. I think what you should want to do is to be a great player. Now, if that then follows that you become captain, that's, that's well and good. But you, to have a burning desire to be captain and then perhaps project that ahead of your own game, I think that can be very, very dangerous. And, uh, you know, I think possibly Kim did do that. Um, I think now, obviously, having had the experience that he's had, I think if Kimberly Hughes ever captains Australia again, he'd be a far better captain. Mm. You know, I mean, he should have learnt a lot over the, the years, but, uh, you know, at that time, very impatient man and very hard being a good captain when you're an impatient person. Talking uh, of impatience, Dennis, you've been involved in uh, a few incidents. Hello. The one that gets uh, a fair bit of play in the book is the uh, incident in Perth. I'm sure uh, you remember that. Do you regret it when you uh, lashed out with the boot at uh, Jarvin? Uh, I, re I regret the well, fact. <laughs> <laughs> regret the fact that it. Um, uh, that Rodney Marsh is underneath it. This will be out. Yes, he's gone. Dennis Lilly is struck. A few words from him as Cladier leaves the ground. Well, Dennis, no doubt you were the dominant bowler during those ten turbulent years. Rodney, you were the dominant wicket keeper. Um, to me, the batsman that keeps coming back in my mind's eye, of course, is Viv Richards. And uh, of all the times you got him, Dennis, and of all those times you were after him, was there one in particular when you look back and you say to yourself, you beauty, Dennis, I've got him? Actually, every time. <laughs> 
because you're very glad to see his backside walking towards the, uh, the pavilion. Great player, a guy that, in fact, probably more than any other player I've played against can just tear an attack apart in no time. Um, has that incredible ability to just pick up the good ball and just flick it over the top. And I mean, just out over an infield, set infield. Um, but the, I guess there was certainly one that stood out uh, in Melbourne one particular time when we'd been, uh, we'd batted all day bar, I guess, about 30 minutes at the end. And we had a crack at them in the last 30 minutes. And uh, we knocked over a couple of their guys and uh, they were three for five or something like that, I think. And Viv came in to bat and we were all pretty charged up and uh, I bowled one to him that sort of took a slight inside edge onto his stumps and the, the crowd and the guys and everyone just sort of it was through the roof stuff. Well, the atmosphere electric and Lily in to bowl the last ball of the day. He's bowled him! He's bowled him! The last ball of the day! Lily heading one to the back, finding the inside edge and bowling out for Richards. Well, what a magnificent start for Australia. The West Indies four down for ten, and the crowd absolutely ecstatic. Well, the great man doing it on the last ball of the day, getting rid of the real West Indian danger man. What a and I'll never forget, afterwards, at the end of that day's play, we sat up the top having a few drinks, a couple of beers, and the crowd, there was, there was a whole heap of the crowd still there. There was probably 5,000 people still sitting around the ground sort of not believing what had happened, that all of a sudden the West Indies were four for five. They still had four eskies, that's what <laughs> <laughs> Well, everybody, uh, of course, loves Viv, and everybody likes Dennis Lilly and Rodney Marsh, but what about the players the fans hate? Is it the same out there? Do you sort of not like them yourselves too? I mean, a bloke like uh, Jeffrey Boyd. Every time there was a, a sort of, we were in a good situation, it was time to have a bit of humour in the dressing rooms, we'd get the sportsman's night straight from Tangles free. <laughs> which is most That'd unusual. Be first. <laughs> most unusual. <laughs> so a great, yeah, great uh, reckon to it. Great characters, great change, and great champions. That's what the last ten turbulent years of cricket has produced. This summer, here on Nine, it's on again, as another ten oh, terrific, <laughs> if maybe not quite so turbulent, years unfold. Jones, just short of a length it was, and he heaved it over the boundary at square leg, just what the doctor ordered. That's out. Yes, three strikes. Alan Lamb caught behind. Half century for Stephen Waugh. He's a very good young cricketer. Swell strike. 